We are going to begin with the, with the lecture of Dr. Uh, Adolfo Ferrando. Um, one of the focus we've uh, wanted to have in the, uh, we've wanted to have in this in this uh, conference is to show excellence uh, excellent science which is done in uh, uh, Salamanca. I'm going to share with you some some of the work that we've been doing about the pathogenesis of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia is a very aggressive hematologic malignancy that results from the malignant transformation of early hemopoietic precursors that originate the T cells, one of the key cellular compartments in the immune system. The development of T cells is complex and is orchestrated by multiple different signaling pathways and checkpoints, but if we have to pick one key signaling pathway that establishes the T cell commitment, the T cell fate, that makes actually T cells out of stem cells, this pathway is the notch signaling pathway. The notch receptors are a very unique way of signaling in the cells. They communicate signals from the extracellular environment directly into the cell nucleus. They work without or almost without secondary messengers and they transduce signals in a very quantic way. So to try to investigate what happens when, when Notch is active and what happens when we suppress Notch, we performed this experiment now 10 years ago. We took T cell leukemias that have activating mutations in Notch 1 and we can detect the active form of Notch 1 with an antibody, this Valin 1744 antibody that recognizes the cleaved form of Notch 1 that goes to the nucleus. And when we treated them with a gamma secretase inhibitor, a Notch inhibitor that suppresses the expression of the oncogenic form of NOTCH1. And this should be probably direct targets of NOTCH or be very close to the transcriptional activity of NOTCH1. But it was only when, when we actually map the direct targets of NOTCH1 in the genome when we realized that in fact, most of these genes are direct targets. And among these direct targets, one stood up as being particularly critical. And this was the MIC oncogen. MIC is a central regulator of cell growth. It's one of the most important genes in cancer. It is translocated, mutated, activated in multiple different ways and downstream of multiple different signaling pathways in a number of human cancers. This is the case. One of the things that we should actually find is autophagy. Autophagy, macroautophagy, it's a mechanism of, of emergency for the cells to, to get energy and get biomass in conditions of starvation. It's the equivalent of it's very cold, you, you run out of wood, you burn the furniture. Cells would actually activate specific pathways that get parts of the endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria into lysosomes to produce brain chain amino acids that they can use to feed the Krebs cycle and produce citrate to generate lipids to sustain cell growth and also to get energy. And you can see how by an electron microscopy we see that when we inhibit notch with DVC we can detect an increase in the number of macroautophagy lysosomal double membrane vesicles and how this is suppressed when we lose pitan. These other drugs are also highly connected and then we have these other drugs that have a very unique gene expression program and makes us think that they maybe they are working in quite a unique way. And in this way now you can actually select what is the drug that is most active, most unique, most synergistic, most cytotoxic, and this drug happens to be withafrin A. Withafrin A is a steroidal lactone that was isolated from the winter cherry. It has been used in traditional medicine in India for thousands of years for almost anything that you can think of. It has been described to have anti-tumor activities. It suppresses angiogenesis in cancer development and has been linked with suppression of different signaling pathways, the nf kappa -B pathway. It has a very unique mechanism of action through the suppression of the heat shock protein complexes.